everyone. Welcome to Podcast for Your Life. We probably should turn the slow Yeah, probably off. should. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's try that again. Hi, everyone. And welcome to Podcast for Your Life. I'm Jam. And I'm Jason. And today, um, at Jason's suggestion, we're going to talk about wine for your life. Wine for your life. Wine's pretty great. Red, white, everything else. Blue. I guess there probably is blue, blue wine. Well, uh, also just to give you an update, we are seven likes closer to whatever goal of likes <laughs> we're trying to go for. <laughs> that was a weird word that. <laughs> so, I know, right? It was one of those like, well, it's like 100% of what, you know? Yeah. Um, seven more likes than, yes, than last week. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Actually, I think it is. Anyway, so, and none of them are our mothers still. Like, mm. we're still waiting for mom to like our Facebook page. Yep. It's good. It's a good track record that your first seven aren't, aren't yeah. moms. I'm not it's sure if they're moms be... in general, but they're not our moms, that's for sure. It's something to be proud of. Yeah. And uh, shout out to our moms. Anyway, today we're talking about wine. Um, there's a story we heard from our coworker recently about a fun name for a bottle of wine that uh, she encountered. Basically, some dude brought a bottle of Josh wine to the party, and... I don't know. It's weird to like. Wow, who names who names a bottle of wine Josh? Like this is a Josh brand of wine. Yeah, I thought it was super weird. I thought it seemed clear who their target audience was. Like if the bottle, if the wine is named, the brand is Josh. They're targeting like the like college bro kind of dude. They're like, it's like the guy who walks into the party and he's like, "Hey everyone, I brought some Josh," and everybody's like, "Whoa, Whoa. no, he did it. He brought some Josh. You oh my god, I can't believe you. That's so cool of him. What?" Or he's like, it's like on the snowboarding trip, he's like, guys, this is going to be the, the best spring break trip ever, and I wanted to make it even a little bit better. No, you didn't. By bringing a couple of bottles of Josh! What's up with oh! that? Oh! Best spring break ever, 2017! <laughs> We're underage! <laughs> no, we don't endorse underage no, no, drinking no, 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 they're so. overage. Um, <laughs> it takes the average college bro to take about five or six years for college, so most of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Define a college bro for me. Uh, well, I didn't. I didn't want to specifically target like fraternity dudes, but more like that fraternity stereotype. Because not everybody's <laughs> stereotype, like that. Yeah. Not everybody's like that, but the stereotype, you know. Right. He he's probably named Josh too. Like it just makes sense that he would yep. bring a bottle of his own wine. Yeah, true. We'll true. have to talk about stereotypes. Yeah, he would think it's hilarious, and he would bring the wine, and then make that joke about his name being Josh every time. That's right. Kind of what that guy would do. Yeah, and it would fall flat most of the time too. Well, I don't know. His friends like Chad and Zach would think it's funny. They would. They would. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Every time. They okay, think got it's funny. this. All right. <laughs> so, um, Josh Wine. Uh, we looked it up. It is actually a bottle of wine. Um, the label just says Josh, and it's like in this kind of script handwriting. Um, it's real, it's not that expensive. It is, I guess, the, it's fully made by Josh Sellers, um, but still, like, it's not like Josh Smith Sellers. It's just Josh Sellers, so it just leaves us with a lot of questions wanting to be answered. Yeah. And also leaves some uh, college images in our head. So full disclosure, I don't know anything about wine. Why not, Jam? Um, because I don't drink, um, and if I did, I probably wouldn't be, like, way into wine or anything. Um, but Jason... You were telling me about, like, a pretty pop... Is it, like, I guess, popular or notorious something cheap wine that everybody knows about? All right. So, there's a commonly known type of wine called uh, Two Buck Chuck. Um, I've heard my dad say Three Buck Chuck, which I guess is, like, Two Buck Chuck for $3 or something. I don't know. But basically, <laughs> yeah, I try to figure out, like, what is the... What's the origin of that name? Is that just like a common name for cheap wine or $2 wine or $3 wine for that matter? Or is there something else going on? And I found out that it's actually named after a brand of wine uh -huh. that uh, places like Trader Joe's sells. Um, it, Charles Shaw is the name of it. So at one point in time, it was $2. And now it is known as Two Buck Chuck because it's $2.00. It's, uh, you know, Chuck is a nickname for Charles, and that's, uh, that's how you get two-buck Chuck. So, basically, whenever you go out there and 
I guess they use that term. It refers to cheap wine, but um, it's just not like an actual Chuck wine unless it's like the Charles Shaw. The Charles Shaw. Like the Charles Shaw, yeah. So, I mean, well, or any Charles. I guess they could have like a Charles Smith. Probably still be a two-buck Chuck. <laughs> Do, did Charles Shaw coin like that brand or whatever? Did they coin the term two-buck Chuck? Know. Or do you think it's like colloquial? I don't know. This podcast isn't for like full 100% accuracy with some of our facts. Well, yeah, you already knew about it before I did, so I just wasn't certain. <laughs> That's but. another podcast. Yeah, so that makes total sense now. There you go. Go out hmm. to your neighborhoods and shop for Chuck. Hopefully it's $2. And now if you're a big fan of cheap wine, you know who your hero is. The guy who, who started it all. Charles Shaw. Maybe. Moment of silence. Maybe with him. He's, raise, he, raise your glasses. He could, I mean, he could be alive still, right? He probably is alive. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out a way to pay him uh, respects. Okay. <laughs> so that's cheap wine. Let's talk about the most expensive wines in the world and how broke we are and we'll <laughs> never be able to afford them. I mean, I really don't understand, like, expensive wine. To me, I'm like, if there's cheap wine, there's expensive wine, is there really that much more, like, production costs and stuff going into expensive wine? Like, did they have to, like grow the grapes in some super different way or like it just doesn't make sense to me like like our wines grown in space or something like that like that might make sense because you have to like grow it in space but in general i don't see how it could be so drastically different to have like a two dollar wine and like a i don't even know how expensive it gets but well it gets pretty expensive there are three probably like there's a good amount of expensive wines in the world and um, you can go to your store and get some like two hundred, three hundred bottle wine, three hundred dollar bottle wines. Um, but let's talk about some of the top ones. And okay. no, none of them were grown in outer space. Okay. Unfortunately, um, that is yet to come. But a couple of them were grown in the eighteenth century. Um, apparently, Thomas Jefferson was a big fan of wineries uh-huh. or winemaking. Yes. And so uh, two of the most expensive wines in the world were actually barreled by him or made by him or made at his one of his vineyards. Some of the um, facts out there are a little uncertain, so there's not like 100% certainty that these were like Thomas Jefferson's actual wines, but they definitely have his initials on them. Huh. So we're not sure whether he actually made them himself or whether it just came from his vineyard or whether it's something else could be complete fake, you know? So that's, like, one of the most expensive kinds is the ones that could be his? So yep. Like, how like how expensive? We're talking about $160,000 for a bottle. Oh, my goodness. Wine. So in that case, it's and not And that's about... not even the most expensive one that he made. No way. <laughs> so in that case, it's not really that it was more expensive to make wine. It's just that after being bottled, that the value of that bottle of wine, since he's been, you know, dead and he's, like, famous... Um, founding father kind of guy. Yeah, kind of. So it's gotten up in value because of that and because it's like a really rare, limited resource? Probably. Probably when he was making wine, it probably was a two-buck chuck back then, but because he became the man he became, including the president of the United States, it's so expensive. Weird. Now, one of his wines from 1787... Uh, I think that it's called the Chateau Margeau. I think if my French serves me right, which I know no French, but um, I think I can relatively pronounce bottles of wine. <laughs> um, in 1787, was when it was created, it was authenticated to be part of his collection. So it was this was one of the ones that was like actual legit Thomas Jefferson's wine. Uh -huh. In um, the past hundred years. Uh, it was sold for a five hundred thousand dollars. Yes, for one bottle. Okay, so this is like this is like one of the most expensive bottles of wine. But plot twist: one night at dinner, whoever had the bottle of wine or whoever was in charge of it, um, a waiter knocked over the bottle of wine, <laughs> and splash! It broke, crashed, spilled everywhere. Five hundred thousand dollars down the toilet, just like that. Here's the, here's is that the sad true? Part. Is that yeah, really true? This is really true, yeah. Oh my gosh. This is what's sad about this. Insurers, obviously a bottle of $500,000 worth of wine is insured, duh. Just like you would a house, for that matter. Seriously. Um, I wonder what kind of insurance would be more expensive. So anyway, this bottle's insured, 
Um, but the insurers only paid out $225,000 for it. Interesting. So the dude probably lost some money on it. Unless he like bought it for cheap, sold it for high, or I don't know. But it's not sad. Just like yeah, just like that, you know. It just kind of talks to you about the brevity of life. That you know, one day it's five hundred thousand dollars, the next minute it's on the carpet. I guess anything is like that. But that also really, to me, highlights the fact that something like that at the bottle of wine that's so easily ruined. Can you believe it? Should never be that expensive. Like never. There should be a cap on it. Where at certain points, like actually too risky to buy it it's like hey this is a liquid that could be spilled at any time or the glass could break or whatever so uh don't pay any more than this for it or whatever i'm not afraid of like breaking a bottle of bourbon but when you spend at least like 30 or 50 dollars on something it's like well i'm gonna try to take care of this but if it breaks like it's kind of a lot of money for something that's just gonna be drink you know gonna be digested yeah and like even if yeah like, so there's a lot of things I love that none of them are wine, but I, like, love coffee. I love kombucha. Um, Can you imagine buying a $500,000 glass or cup of coffee? Yeah, no way. I mean, I don't even want to, like, pay, like, $40 for... There's, like, a cup of coffee that's amazing that you can get for, like, $40. And, um, $40? For, that's even way too much for that's coffee. Just, that's the only one I've... Sorry, I should say that's the only one I've it's crossed my path. Uh, if, like, I've had the opportunity to do that, and I did not do it. That's um, good. and that's still too much, you know, because part of it's about like quantity of coffee, not so much like the rare quality of one cup. Yeah. So there you go. You've got two buck Chuck on one end and you've got Thomas Jefferson's own vino on the other end. So I feel like my opinion of wine, like already not being interested in it. It's like that is becoming a stronger feeling for me. Like I'm less interested in it. Of really? course, it's cool to learn some of this stuff, but like. I'm less interested in even stepping into the world of wine than I was before. It's so amusing, though, to read the descriptions and flavorings of wine. Like, if you go to, um, well, Trader Joe's, I hate to keep using them because I don't want to show, like, favoritism, but they are a pretty cool store. Their descriptions of each wine are super detailed. They will say it's, like, oaky and dry and fruity and has hints of vanilla and apricot and bergamot. You know, it's like... They get down to the specifics. I don't know if those things actually have vanilla, apricot, bergamot, but by all means, they sold me on just the description (laughs) sometimes. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, oaky is definitely one I don't understand. Like, I'm like, who tasted an oak tree or something? And then was like, oh, man, this tastes just like wine, or vice versa, or whatever. Sommeliers have to go through that training. They have to just grind up bits of different woods and to be like, oh, this has more of an oaky feel and this has more of a walnut tree feel and this one has more of a, like, particle board feel. So maybe sommeliers excuse me. started out by, like, being... There's, like, some disease... Craftsmen, you, probably. You start, there's a weird disease where you, like, eat things that aren't edible. So I wonder if they, like, had just eaten tons of non-edible things and then when they started drinking wine, they were like, oh, I'm tasting all kinds of unedible things in here. Types of wood, grass... <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. Okay. They don't, they don't really do the grass thing, but... Okay. I can understand with the wood. I, I think it's because the wine is made usually in barrels, mm. and uh, that's how you get it. So, But still, uh, it, it, it leaves this, this funny image of how do you, like, why do you get oak from this thing that tastes like grape juice that's been fermented? So, Interesting. Anyway. Well, I can relate to it a little bit because they use some words like that for describing coffee, like whenever it's single origin, very specific kinds of coffee. But to me, they make more sense because they're almost all fruity words for the most part. Yep. And so it's like, oh yeah, this tastes a little bit like um, berry or whatever. It so seems like that too. It's a little less, like it doesn't sound as as like rich person like, but like, you can't say a wine description without sounding like you're a snob or a wealthy person or something. For sure. So there you go. That is our discussion today for your life about wine. And um, if you ever have any topics that you want to send in we've got seven folks who are uh you know listening to what's going on these days so all seven of you could send us like a week's worth of things to talk about and uh we would love to hear them and love your suggestions and hear your feedback too about how the show's going totally and uh, i think we've come to the consensus that wine is a little bit of a waste of time so now we can move to a different topic that's the moral of the story that (laughs) wine is a waste of time (laughs) and money is that really (laughs) no wait if it's two buck chuck though uh we'll be back next time with a as of yet unknown topic but um if you're trying to find the best way to listen to us just check your favorite podcast app and we will talk to you soon see you later guys